And now that you've noted the review on the note, it's time to get epic with the Celcon Epic. And right away, I can tell you, this phone is seriously different even if it's in the same category. Let me show you. This then is the Celcon Epic. Now, uh, let's just start before I even fire up that screen and show you what is the first feeling that you get. Remember, in 5.5 inch screens, the screen is really critical. If it's not a good resolution, it's not bright, it's not really clear and precise, it has to be very sharp, and it's a terrible experience on a big screen phone. But before I do that, take a look at this. Turn it around. Beautiful rubberized texture. I mean, that's what really makes this stand out. Very sleek, very good in the hand and a much lighter phone than you expect. Now, usually a 5.5-inch screen phone would be a heavy phone. This is very, very light. Of course, typically the back, they have just those two things, the camera and, of course, the, the flash. On this side are some of the buttons. Uh, remember, it has an extra T-flash slot, SIM 1. On this side, SIM 2. The other control buttons for volume, power on, but that's pretty much it. But now comes the interesting part. Watch this. A very very clear screen. In fact, it really hits out at you and that really gets this whole phone started very well. Like I said, if you get a pixelated screen, not a very clear, bright, precise screen on a 5.5 inch, there's really no idea buying it. This one starts well. Can it keep going? Well, we'll find out in our review. With a name like Millennia Epic, you better get your A-game to the table. Thankfully, Celcon has taken mostly the right route when it comes to the Q550, but is it worth the 10,000 you will dole out for it? The unibody plastic chassis the Celcon has gone with feels solid and nice to hold in the hand. The soft touch back cover made of similar materials like the Micromax A1 feels sturdy as well. Celcon has also managed to keep the phone relatively slim at 8mm. We aren't big fans of the plastic flap covering the SD and SIM slots and the capacitive buttons at the bottom of the screen aren't backlit, which means relying on muscle memory when you can't see them in low light. Nothing you can't get used to, but we wish Celcon would have put a little more thought here. Overall, a solid design, but could this be a game changer for the brand? Well, this is actually a terrific handset. I would say probably one of the best handsets uh, uh, from Celcon Mobiles. Affordability is always our top priority. So we just priced this as 9999 and at the same time I have to say that there's no, no other brand who is able to offer uh, uh, such kind of specifications at this price band. So definitely this will be a hot selling model in the market. The phone runs a MediaTek quad-core chipset clocked at 1.3 GHz paired with 1 GB of RAM and a Mali 400 GPU. The processor keeps the phone running smoothly barring a few stutters here and there. Part of the reason the phone runs smooth and to our pleasant surprise is the nearly stock version of Android 4.4 Kit on board. The 5.5 inch 720 screen is decent and provides good colors and viewing angles. The phone comes with 16 GB of onboard storage which can be expanded up to 64 GB via micro SD card. The 3500 mAh battery lasts you a day on a single charge. The 8 MP camera on the rear does a decent job of capturing images with a good amount of detail and sharpness. The front facing 2 megapixel can give you decent selfies in a pinch but don't expect too much from it. Compared to the cheaper Android One smartphones, you get a bigger screen and better battery life. Going up against the Redmi Note, you get a nearly stock version of Android and widespread availability. Compared to phones in its own price range like the Panasonic P61 or the Ivory Access Note, it falls a little short on the camera department but hangs in there when it comes to general performance. So, should you get one? Absolutely, but you may want to hold it off if you want a better camera than the one you get here.